And what I have noticed and observed through my work is that the companies that are the greatest companies, the ones that can really create these powerful beliefs in customers' minds, where customers say, I can't get it anywhere else. I got to do business with that company. And those companies earn a disproportionate share of the customers' businesses. Those are the companies where their employees are eager and ready every day to come to work and be the brand and really be the brand as they do their work. This is what it really takes. Now, as we're starting to build our connection between employees, customers, and results, we can now see what drives this idea of brand harmony, how all interactions drive the customer's beliefs. It's the actions your employees take. Every time one of your employees does something, it can impact the customer experience. Let me ask you a question. Can you think of one employee in your organization, even people who never meet customers, can you think of one person who does not have an effect on the customer experience? I'll bet you can't. Even a person who never meets customers either supports people who do or behind the scenes has an impact. Somebody in your accounting department or your IT department. Employee actions are what create brand harmony. And if we've said every time a customer comes in contact with your company, their beliefs about you are enriched or diluted, you can say the same thing about employee actions. Every time your employees do something, however minute it might be, there's an effect on the overall customer experience. Now in my group, my company, we call these brand habits, the things that customers do. The habits that people have in your company. Now every company has habits, don't they? Every cultural group has habits. I mean, some companies have a habit of showing up to meetings on time and sitting there attentively and participating till the end of the meeting. And some companies have habits to straggle in for the first five or 10 minutes after the meeting's called for and jump up as soon as the cell phone rings, right? Those are habits. Groups tend to form habits. The question is, how can we nurture in our organizations habits among our people that contribute to this sense of brand harmony that customers have? Now, some brand habits are basic customer service kind of habits, like being nice. But don't stop just at customer service. We want to elevate this beyond just being nice and cordial to customers, to thinking about how we can create habits among our employees where every time they act, they are contributing to enriching that belief that customers have about us. They are creating brand harmony. They are making it easy for the customer to say, I get it. I know what that company's all about. I want what they do, and I can't get what they do anywhere else. That's what you're trying to get your employees to do. That's what good brand habits are. Much higher level than just customer service. Well, remember we said over here that customer beliefs drive customer actions? Same thing happens with your employees. Their beliefs drive their actions. As Emerson said, the ancestor of every action is a thought or a belief. Happens with your customers, happens with your employees. Your employees' beliefs drive their actions. And we said that your brand is what your customers believe about you. Well, what your employees believe about you is your internal brand, the brand inside your company. It's what your employees believe about you. Now, if you look at this chart, you can see that we have now made the connection between employees on the left, customers in the middle, and results on the end. And what is it that starts the whole process? What is the fuel of unleashing that latent profit in your business, it's your employees' beliefs. It's when your internal brand is rich, compelling, powerful. When your employees have beliefs about you that encourage them to be the brand and act. A strong internal brand can be defined very simply as a shared belief of who we intend to be. When you can create among your employees a shared belief of who we intend to be, that's when they are eager, ready to effectively be the brand, creating a sense of brand harmony in your customers' minds and thereby making that connection between employees, customers, and results. A shared belief of who we intend to be. If I asked them about your company, would they be able to give me this detailed, rich description of what you do in the world, why you're special to customers, what it is that really works? But by the same token, not only having an ability to do a rich 15-minute description of what your company does, could your employees boil that down to the essence? Could they get down to a short, tight description of what you do? Think of it this way. Could one of your employees describe who you are 
what you want to be and why you're special to customers so clearly that their 15-year-old could understand it? In fact, maybe an even better question, is what you do and who you are and who you want to be so important to your employees that they would want to describe it to their 15-year-old kid? What can you do to make your employees have this very rich, deep belief of who you are? Now, this is an old story. It's been kicking around for 800 years, so if you've heard it, I'm sorry. I didn't make this one up because I was not around 800 years ago. This story takes place on the banks of the Seine River 800 years ago as the Notre Dame Cathedral was being built. How many of you have seen Notre Dame? It's pretty majestic, isn't it? Well, there was a reason they built a lot of these medieval cathedrals on riverbanks. You know why? Well, their trucking was not very good back in those days. So they had to bring the boulders over water. And if you went to the riverbanks by one of the construction sites for a medieval cathedral, you'd see the same scene. There'd be all these guys with huge boulders and chisels and hammers, and they're cutting these stones. Now, your job is to cut one for the floor, you cut one for the arch, and you're doing one for the ceiling, and everybody's there pounding away, cutting their stones. So imagine this scene. And this medieval Frenchman skips up. This is a guy who didn't have to do this. He must be a farmer or something. He walks up to the first guy, sees him cutting, and says, hey, pal, what are you doing? The guy looks up and says, you jerk, what do you think I'm doing? Look at me. I'm cutting a stone, aren't I? Undeterred, our medieval Frenchman goes up to the next guy. Hey, pal, what are you up to? You idiot, what do you think I'm doing? I'm cutting a stone. Still undeterred, our medieval Frenchman goes to a third guy who's got the same kind of boulder, the same chisel, same hammer, same arm movements. Hey, what are you doing? This guy says, I'm building a cathedral. Now think of the difference between somebody who says, my job is cutting a stone versus somebody who says, my job is cutting, is building a cathedral. It's entirely different. Let me tell you my observation, working with lots of companies. Most employees, Yes, there are the strange ones, but most employees, virtually all, would rather understand their job as building a cathedral than cutting stones. However, when I ask people to describe their jobs, even beyond the first statement, but we get into a long conversation, they don't talk about the cathedral. They talk about the stones they cut. So if employees truly are interested in building a cathedral, but they talk about stone cutting, why do you think that happens? Anybody have a thought? It's because we don't usually talk to employees about the cathedral. Look at most training programs. They're about the stone cutting. They're about the tasks. What we need to do is elevate that conversation to be about who we intend to be. What's the big picture? What are we really trying to do here? When you invite your employees into that conversation, they will think of their jobs as cathedral building and not stone cutting. 